So opportunistic salpingectomy refers to the recommended practice of discussing the removal of fallopian tubes in a patient who is undergoing a hysterectomy, which is the removal of a uterus, um, or in a patient who is seeking never to undergo another pregnancy and so looking for um, a tubal sterilization, which has commonly been referred to as having one's tubes tied. And this recommendation was made because there is um, quite a bit of evidence suggesting that high-grade serous ovarian cancer, which is the most common and the most lethal form of ovarian cancer, originates often in the fallopian tube and not on the ovary as was originally believed. My name is Justine. Uh, my mother died of ovarian cancer, was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2009 and died 16 months later. Uh, and, uh, and my grandmother died, my, gra my mother was 66 when she died. My grandmother died 30 years before that at 52 of ovarian cancer. And in my mother's journey, they had done some genetic testing to see if there was a BRCA issue or not. So it turns out there wasn't, it's just that the geneticists didn't like the fact that two young women had died of the same cancer. My grandmother, as it turned out in the 60s, they didn't really know it was ovarian cancer because it didn't test the same sort of way. The autopsy ended up showing that, that the geneticist at the cancer agency found for us, which was hugely beneficial for me, of course. So after my mother had passed, we got the results that she didn't have a BRCA gene, which means I would not have a BRCA gene, but the geneticist thought that the odds were just too great. So they, they had recommended that I have my tubes removed. I was 39 at the time. Um, I think, yeah, just 39 at the time. I had a son and I was then having children. So I, that seemed like a no brainer to me to have that surgery. Uh, it just seemed like the story needed to stop. Uh, so, in the spring of 2011, I had my tubes removed, um, which was a very simple procedure. It was laparoscopic. The surgery itself was about 30 minutes. Um, the recovery was zero. I mean, besides it felt like I'd done a thousand sit-ups, which I had never done before in my life. Um, it was back to normal. And because it was my tubes, there was no, there's no hormone impact on that. And they, the reason they had recommended I keep my ovaries as I was only 39. So while Justine had an important family history motivating her decision to undergo an opportunistic salpingectomy, most people who choose this procedure do not. Opportunistic salpingectomy is designed to prevent the 80% of high-grade serous ovarian cancers that arise in people with no known genetically increased risk for this cancer. Most people, like our colleague Janice Kwan, who undergo opportunistic salpingectomy are offered it simply because they are already undergoing a hysterectomy or because they would like to avoid any future pregnancies and have asked to have their tubes tied. The decision for me to choose an opportunistic salpingectomy really goes back to uh, my perspective as a healthcare provider and my interest in uh, ovarian cancer prevention. Um, for many years, we thought ovarian cancer arose primarily in the ovary, but we've learned over the last 20 years that the majority of ovarian cancers arise in the fallopian tube. In 2013, when I had a, an elective cesarean section for my second child, my second child was in a breech presentation, and so I was advised to have a cesarean section. I chose to have a salpingectomy at that time. So my research for the past eight years has focused on understanding both the safety and effectiveness of opportunistic salpingectomy as an ovarian cancer prevention strategy. And all of our evidence to date suggests that opportunistic salpingectomy is very safe and does not increase risks compared to hysterectomy alone or compared to having your tubes tied, which are the surgeries that you would receive if you chose not to undergo opportunistic salpingectomy. So there's no suggestion that we have any reason to be concerned about the safety of this procedure. We also have some really exciting preliminary evidence on the effectiveness of opportunistic salpingectomy. In British Columbia, with nine years of follow-up data, we have not seen a single case of high-grade serous ovarian cancer in the group who has undergone opportunistic salpingectomy, and this is significantly fewer than the number that we would have expected to see in this group.
So one of the challenges that we are facing using opportunistic salpingectomy as an ovarian cancer prevention approach is that we are doing fewer hysterectomies and fewer tubal ligations every year. So the number of patients that we can reach to prevent ovarian cancers is decreasing annually. So what we're looking at right now is expanding to surgeries beyond just hysterectomy and people who are looking to have their tubes tied. We're seeking other surgical opportunities where surgeon is already in the pelvis and has access to remove the fallopian tubes easily. What can you do today? If you do not plan to have any future pregnancies, ask your doctor about removing your fallopian tubes if you are having a hysterectomy, which is removal of the uterus, or a tubal ligation, which is having your tubes tied to prevent future pregnancy. You can also talk to your surgeon about removing your fallopian tubes if you are having other surgery in the lower abdomen, such as colorectal surgery or having your appendix removed or other abdominal surgery.